Hi everyone, so you may have seen one of my previous videos where I showed you how to enable the OPC UI server on the S7 1500 PLC, yeah, so the advanced PLC from the S7 family. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the same with an S7 1200, so it's younger brother. The main difference is on the S7 1500, you can actually enable something called a semantic server interface. So this takes all of your data on the PLC and exposes this on OPC UA. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but this is the easiest thing you can do. You can also create a server interface there where you define what data you want to actually be exposed on the OPC UA server. And this is a much better idea. And actually this is the only option available on the S7-1200 PLC. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to enable the OPC UA server on the S7-1200 PLC and how to create your custom server interface. Let's get to it. Okay, I have a fresh new project. I called it S7-1200 OPC UA. Um, let's add a device. Now, I know that I have a 4.5-1200 CPU, but I'm not sure which one it is. So I'm going to be using the unspecified CPU option and I will detect it on my interface. Yeah, so I'm using the uh, tier portal functionality that allows me to detect devices and configure the hardware accordingly to what's there in the in the real life. So there you go, we detected our 1200 on 0.113 IP address. That's now created for me. Um, so what next? Okay, we have the S7-1500. I want to enable the OPC UA server. Why they want to enable the OPC UA server is the question. Well, I want to read some data. On this guy, I have nothing. It's a brand new project. So let's actually set it up. I'm going to um, enable full access with no protection, which is not something I would advise you to do. And I'm going to add a signal generator from libraries. So I have downloaded myself the library of general functions from the support side. And here in LG LGF signal generators, uh, we have the sine wave generator that I will be using. Okay, so amplitude of 100, some big periods that we can actually see things happening. And now I need to add a cyclic interrupt OB that it will be uh, using for, for calculations. This OB is number 30 and I'm going to be saving my value here because I'm simply lazy. Okay, no, this is actually bad. Let's not do it this way. It would work, but let's actually add ourselves a new uh, data block call it maybe UA server actually. Now here I'm going to add what data type was it? Value is a real. So I'm going to add a real call it um, value. That's fine. Now in my main, I'm going to just Grab it here. Yeah, this should be all good. So I will have something generating data. This is really irrelevant. This is just for me to, to prove that everything works. So now if I go to the properties, Alt Enter uh, of my um, S7-1200 and go to OPC UA settings, here I can activate the OPC UA server. The default, um, the default parameters will enable this with the guest access on port 4840. So this is the uh, default port uh, with these basic security um, policies, okay? So there will be no protection. Again, it's not something that uh, I'd recommend. I would recommend that you create a, a user with a password, use certificates for encryption, but just here to quickly show you how you set it up, uh, we can leave it at this. Now I said, the 1200 is slightly different to a 1500 and there isn't the standard semantic interface. So normally on the 1500, there would be another tick box here saying enable standard semantic server interface. And then it exposes everything that's on your PLC. If you want to do this uh, onto one namespace, again, it's not something I would recommend. Actually, this way is, is much, much better. But let's see what happens if we don't actually create a server interface, what will we get? One more thing we need to do, we need to 
uh, say that yes we have purchased a license actually it's a paper license so you just uh, buy the license you get the paper you say you have it and now let's uh, just make sure that the settings here are correct yeah so 0113 as you can see when i uploaded when i detected my unknown 1200 it already grabbed it from the device and now we can do the download select this one and start search okay found my poc let's load this now the way we are going to test this is we are going to use um, a free software called ua expert it's my software of choice for testing um opc ua servers if you just google ua expert you should find the um the website from where you can download this or purchase it if you need the more advanced functions okay let's start the module so our poc should be now up and running uh, let's put the, the little goggles on the little glasses let's go online with the poc and see okay the variables are changing so as you can see we are getting the the sine wave and now let's go to ua expert and connect with our server on 192.168.0113 port 4840 okay yeah it discovered the server so this step now already tells us our opc ua server is up and running so this is very good news if you're not getting this either you haven't downloaded to the poc or you don't have connectivity connectivity you should be able to test by just pinging yeah so if we did that um cmd and then ping 192.168.0113 okay if you're not getting any reply here then it will be down to your network if you are then it probably you have not downloaded the config i would urge you to recompile and download the configuration okay let's connect yeah i'm happy with this certificate and as you can see we are getting a few different namespaces yeah so we are actually getting three different namespaces the ones that are of interest normally is this server interfaces so when you actually create any server interfaces they will appear here and what you get by default is this so the name of your poc my poc is called poc underscore one yours will be something different and here you have some not even diagnostic information i guess some information yeah so you'll get like um device provision you will get the model yeah so that's a string telling exactly what this is normally if it was a 1500 and we enable the standard semantic interface under the name of your poc you would get all the data yeah if you don't enable it you get exactly same same thing so here i think we should get the firmware revision so 4.5 yeah but no data here so how do we get the data well to get the data let's now go offline with the poc and let's create the server interface so server interfaces can be found on the left hand side here under opc ua communication so if we go under server interfaces and on the new one we can then uh, select a server interface type interface yeah and then a new window opens and this window if you grab this here in the middle uh, it allows us to basically drag and drop tags that we are interested in so whatever you want to expose on opc ua you just select from here from the right hand side yeah i'm interested in this entire block and you can do it either by dragging uh, variables yeah so like me i only maybe want to expose single variable or maybe you'd like to actually expose entire data block yeah so we have exposed entire data block if i had any tags you can also grab tags from here yeah so it's very very easy and actually truly this is a much better way because it gives you a full control over what is exposed you shouldn't be exposing everything there is you should only expose the data that is relevant and that is required to be exposed to some other systems that can access it via opc way so currently we are exposing the value from the ua server data block and we are exposing entire lgf uh, instance data block yeah so let's see what happens now let's download this to the device okay load yeah and if we go back to ua 
And if we actually rebrowse, still no, nothing new here. There will not be anything new. But here on the server interfaces, now we have server interface one. Yeah, so this is the name we gave it here. Okay, and here I can see my value. I can drag and drop it. And as you can see, the value is changing. So we are getting live data. And also I should have some uh, some variables here. This should be exactly same same value. There's maybe one more thing to touch on here. Okay, so yeah, sure, we can drag and drop. That's that easy. But there's something else you can actually do. So let's hide this for now. And you can actually start building this interface from scratch. Yeah, so I can just say value. And then, as you can see, it is not mapped. It's just something that's ready to be used. So I have value. Maybe now you want to have some information regarding, a, a, sorry, maybe a, a conveyor actually. Yeah, so you have a conveyor and you can change this conveyor to now be an object. Yeah, and you can say every conveyor has a motor and maybe a motor is an object again. And then every motor has current, has speed, has torque, yeah. Uh, and let's say that all these are actually reals. Yeah, so we can actually prepare it like this. You can mix and match, yeah, so you can actually drag and drop this value here and that's fine. But what you can do once you created this server interface, you prepared it, you can use generate local data. So this is going to look at this and basically for the variables that uh, are not mapped yet, it's going to create you a nice new data block. Yeah, so new general data block, server interface data, you can change it and then OK. And as you can see, it created me a data block with all these all these things here. Yeah, so I can then pass it onto someone else and someone else can do the mapping. If you are interested in this, you should probably have a look into companion specifications in OPC UA because this is really the, the proper way of doing this. But this is still very, very handy because, you know, someone can just prepare you all this information. You can then import this into here. And then, you know, maybe the programmer can just move the data around from his program into the data block that you created. Uh, but that's all I wanted to show you. If you have any questions or are interested in any other functionalities around OPC UA, maybe just let me know in the comments. Thanks. Bye.